talk to you about with a programme that's coming through called Better Health Staffordshire. Um, I don't know if there's been any approach yet to Tamworth, but I know that it's <coughs> on, on the do list, certainly for the county. And a colleague of mine called Chris Barrett um, will be making contact imminently to have a chat with you about that. Um, we know that there are higher than national average of limiting long-term long illnesses in people over, aged over 65 and um, higher than that, I can't read my own writing, I'm sorry, higher than national average of older people aged 60 and over living in income deprived households as well. So um, in terms of um, financial exclusion, there are some challenges for you in Tamworth there. The key issues that we know for the PCN, which um, primary care network is pretty much coterminous with the borough, are identified as the increasing older population that you have. And obviously, um, people in poor health as they get older increases the likelihood of attendances with hospital and strain on social care. And then also, um, there are significant um, overlaps, I guess, with the um, folk that are affected with poor health and um, your levels of crime and loneliness and unpaid carers, actually, as well. There's a few themes that seem to cross over there. Um, Unhealthy lifestyles is something that um, pops up for the PCN for Tamworth as well around adult obesity and smoking and then A&E attendances and emergency admissions are among the highest in Staffordshire as well with A&E attendances and respiratory and preventable illness with adults and children. So hopefully just that little whistle stop tour is no surprise to you um, but those are the things really that we're trying to concentrate on with the work that we want to talk to you about this evening. If that makes sense. And as I said, um, one of the public health consultants is leading some work on locality profiles, which will give you all of that data at your fingertips so you will know exactly what's going on for you locally. Um, and we will share those with you as soon as they're available. We're hoping that they're available later on in the year, around summer, early autumn time. Thank you, Jo. So um, we've talked a lot there about health and wellbeing in its broadest sense. But what we do recognise and appreciate is the district and borough councils are already doing such a lot of stuff already. Um, there's a couple of examples thrown in on there. Again, I can't read it from here, but parks and open spaces and local facilities that you will be managing, community gardens and allotments, community wellbeing events, good neighbour schemes, um, commissioning activity that you're doing to support vulnerability and homelessness, the grants and lottery schemes that many of the district and boroughs are involved with, and then things like consultation on local plans or licensing policies. All of these things are contributing to that wider health and wellbeing agenda. And, you know, we can't lose sight of how important that stuff is and how we need to join up. You have got the insight into the local needs and you know your communities best. The county can do some, but we don't know everything. And that's where we feel we've got to work really closely with you at a district level to make sure that the work that we're doing complements your work and vice versa, um, and that we're, we're hitting the mark, really. Um, yes, I think that's everything on that one, thank you. So further opportunities to improve health and wellbeing. We know we've got the successful um, partnership working history. There's probably more that we could, should be doing. Um, we know that you've got the local knowledge and footprint, as we've said. There's lots of local impacts, small local impacts, I'd say, that are having a cumulative effect across the district, which contribute to the wider work in the county. There's lots of good practice here that we'd like to see shared and replicated elsewhere in the other districts. Um, similarly, there's lots of great work in the other districts that potentially you might like to repl replicate here in your district. So it's really how we look to accommodate and facilitate some of that um, information sharing moving forward. We know that the existing activity makes a huge impact. So, you know, please don't think that we're undermining any of that at all, because we're really not. We really do acknowledge the great stuff that's happening already in the district. But we do recognise that there are limits to the capacity and the resources that you've got in the district as well. And um, just on, on the way in earlier, Joe and I were having a conversation around sometimes the county is perceived to be making all of these different requests for all this different work coming into the, the, the borough and the districts. Um, and often, there's 
it seems that there's a cast of thousands at county, I believe me, there isn't, but it sometimes feels like um, we're making very many approaches where we perhaps need to streamline them in, and that's very much about how we're taking this conversation forward with you in the future, because there's definitely an appetite to work together more eff effectively and share and learn and signpost and, and do a little bit more where we get the opportunities to do so. Ultimately, this is about how we create in resilience within our communities um, and create some sustainability at the end of it as well. Just wanted to flag up um, the other support and the other great work that's out there already um, in across the county actually but, but in your district. So Community Together CIC, you'll be well versed and familiar with them. I've, I've only discovered them quite recently so I, you, know, you guys will know more about them than me. Um, and they're doing some fantastic work across Staffordshire. They've been your anchor organisation haven't they through Covid as well. So. Um, they are there, they're very active. If you don't know about them, I'm sure they'd, they'd be willing to have a conversation and tell you a little bit more about what they get up to. Um, support Staffordshire and Skivvies are the two services that are commissioned by the County Council to support the um, VCSE sector. Again, they're doing some fantastic work in this space. They're hosting social prescribers, for example, which are dotted across the county. Um, and then you've also got Age UK and Health Watch that are very active in the health and wellbeing space across the county. And I know um, Carl Bennett from Age UK, UK has been really keen to get involved with the work of the districts at a local level. Um, so if, you if you're not hooked up with Carl, we'll get you introduced. I think Age UK, as, as members know that, we work quite closely with them for Do the you? dementia, we retain our dementia. Oh, uh, your status. friendly status, yeah. 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 And, and to be fair, there are a lot of districts and um, we've been having conversations with the parish councils as well that are championing the um, dementia friendly status some have got it some haven't yet got it so there's there's some you know trading to do it with experience mm -hmm. and best practice there as well so that'd be a really good piece of work if you wanted to be involved okay thank you that's that one and just finally really just a bit of a summary of how, that is a whistle stop tour and we have trotted through that really quickly we really wanted to just try and give you a bit of an overview of the health and wellbeing agenda for Staffordshire and what we're trying to achieve um, and of course, more specifically, how we can get you more involved and how um, we are trying to contribute to this agenda collectively and collaboratively as a partnership. We really would be keen to do um, more co-produced, co-production, um, particularly when we start to talk about health and all policies and the agenda there and things like the health impact assessment. We don't want to be creating resources that, you know, it feels like it's done to. We want to be producing them together so that you've got something that's very practical that will work for you too. Um, and ultimately it's about creating those environments that can thrive and be more sustainable. That's the bit I think that we just need to keep coming back to. So I guess this is probably where I stop talking because I have a tendency to witter on. Um, and it's probably just over to you just to ask any questions that you might have and if we can perhaps put heads together to work out some next steps. Okay. Uh, Chase, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Jai. Thank you. Um, thanks for the presentation, firstly. Um, obviously, this is health and well-being, so things like public spaces, community groups, etc., have a big role in, in the well-being side and prevention for some of the health side. Um, on slide five, you said 15% is health care. And then social circumstances in a separate um, section, but I believe you could argue it's quite interlinked to the health care. So... If we are one of the most popularly dense, uh, most densely populated areas in Staffordshire, and we've got some of the poorest communities, where in here does proximity of health services to the user come in? So, if you've got someone that's in poor social circumstances, they're less likely to have the money to travel outside of Tamworth, um, and therefore they're less likely to have prevention. They're less likely to have that contact with who they need. So where, where does proximity of services to users come into this? That clear on the um, pie chart as such, I think you could argue it's in a few places. Um, I, I, we, public health, don't have any control over the public service of healthcare. So that's not our role. Um, but we do have some control over the social circumstance and environment and that, that, that really is the role of the county council and the district councils. So the work that we're doing around financial inclusion, cost of living, those, that's probably our, our area of influence, if you like. Does that answer the question? 
So I get that. But is there not a role also to to see it from that angle and at least being another body lobbying for that? Because if, you've, if you're looking at cost of living, and for example, a few weeks ago, I took my daughter to the hospital. I've got the luxury of being able to get in the car, drive to the children's hospital. Other people can't do that. So, and they would probably wouldn't take their child, wouldn't take themselves. Yeah. So do you not do any lobbying on that side as well? Because it's so interlinked. Yeah. I, unless someone's going to tell me differently, it's, that's not ever been the role of public health, the lobbying side. Mm-hmm. We've, not, we've not gotten into that space. I mean, I think that that's probably an issue that, that should and possibly is discussed at, um, at the level of the Health and Wellbeing Board. So again, those, those kind of issues about um, the availability by, by geographical availability of healthcare services is something which forms part of that overall um, health concern for all partners. And it would be the Health and Wellbeing Board where those kind of issues you know, should be discussed. Um, I, I'm not familiar, I don't know if they, if they are discussed in any great detail. And of course, through our partnership working, where there are those kind of local concerns, then we would raise those with the, um, the health providers, so the health commissioners, um, in, in whatever form they're taking at this moment. Yeah, I, and I'd just add to that really, there's the new... Oh, not very good with these microphones, am I? I'd add to that really, the newly formed ICBs. Um, are picking up that's that's their sort of area their sphere of work um, um yeah I'd, I'd probably signpost over there and, and i think from from a, from from our partnership point of view when we've been uh you know see we mentioned ctcic there they are the social prescribers for tamworth so the, the social prescribing being where a gp can actually refer to the social prescriber for things that are going on within their community. So rather than giving them tablets for something or trying to determine what their health issues are, they will socially socially prescribe into the community. For It could be a, a singing class, it could be a, a walking group. And it's about us understanding, therefore, which we do largely around what voluntary sector groups are within our communities. And I will add, when we've had, you know, MPFT here and also some of the our health colleagues, they, they've already done this kind of asset mapping of where they might well be able to deliver if there is a demand for community clinics or cl- community groups or something that they can have at a location that's maybe not a doctor surgery to actually do things you know for instance ctcrc are doing a leg club things like that and that's so the that's the that's part within, that we need to yeah that's the bit that's within our, our sphere of influence if you mm. like whereas the the isn't a public health function that would sit very clearly with the ICBs, rightly or wrongly. Yeah, thank you. Um, you mentioned the Health Wellbeing Board and you know these issues were probably discussed there. Forgive me, my ignorance here, someone on here might know the answer, but who represents Tamworth there? And do they know what users need to represent Tamworth on there? Uh, well, Tamworth is represented, so uh, all of the districts in the uh, in Staffordshire are represented by um, two district representatives, which are, for the south of Staffordshire, it's a political representative from um, South Staffs. Um, I, I don't know the details of um, how that representation is um, takes place. I, I have to say, personally, I don't receive any feedback from the Health and Wellbeing Board. Um, and I, I'm not sure. Oh, sorry. And of course, there is a district um, chief executive representative. Thank you, uh, which is Tim Clegg, um, chief executive of Cannock and Stafford. Um, so that that's where those that district representation um, takes place. So I know I keep coming back, but I think we should take this in action then to work out how it, it might be happening already. But how does time will feed into those two individuals going to represent us? Because just based on geographically where they are, I'd argue they don't know what users need here. So how are we feeding into them? Um, it, it might already be happening. There might be meetings, you know, offline going on that we don't know about. But I think we should take an action to find out who's feeding into that. It's my view anyway. Just on a bit uh, what Councillor Joe was saying, so uh, I understand what, what you're speaking about, the services. W- would that be something that on a local plan level that could be looked at? The local plan would pick that up partially um, and obviously the local plan comes with a health impact assessment and a, 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 an assessment of health provision, um, particularly where there's growth. 
Um, I think in terms of you know the issue of the availability of GP surgeries, of course that is a national issue, um, and arguably that's something which again is influenced by you know sort of national policy. Um, but certainly the the local plan um, is is uh, it is formulated in the context of the availability of health services. How much influence the the but the local plan would not necessarily have influence necessarily over the commissioning or the deliver, delivery of those services be more about reflecting what the availability is and what the context is. So, so that would show more evidence to uh, the ICB for example potentially I, I have to say I'm not quite sure how that all would knit together um, and I think this is sort of one of those issues where you know we're, we're here today we're district and public health Obviously, there's a whole other world, which is health commissioners, um, as you say, integrated care boards, etc. Yeah. And I know at times, you've, you've, as a committee, you've scrutinised certain issues of local provision. So you've had the, uh, the, the uh, commissioners for mental health services here. Um, so again, that, that all form, forms part of that sort of context. So how all that fits together and things get commissioned, I, I would have to say I'm not entirely clear. Wouldn't be able to brief on that. Uh I think, Chair, if I can just put it in that, that that's one of the reasons that, as Sarah alluded to, that they are that, that we are they're trying to commission or to actually understand what a health profile looks like for Tamworth, why each of the districts are having their own health profile, because clearly there's eight different districts with eight different needs, and as Sarah alluded to what some of the priorities in Tamworth are not necessarily the priorities elsewhere in the county. So that that local profile will probably be able to drive and give more data to the providers as to, to where there may be gaps or maybe requirement for other, other services, I guess. If I may, though, just to clarify, in terms of healthcare services, mm. it's very much that that would need to go back yeah. as a recommendation to the ICB because we don't, yeah, for we can't public health, it. commission those sorts of services. Mm. So that's something that we just need to um, clarify. The, the local plan is an interesting one, though, because I'm doing a piece of work with Stafford at the moment. Um, and also having conversations with Newcastle, a couple of the other districts around their local plan process. And the idea is, as you say, um, it, it's there to influence recommendations back to mm. whoever it needs to, whether it be the ICB or the public health team or others. Um, so it, it, it's definitely something to have a think about and have a look at, but I can't answer it specifically mm. for health services and the commissioning of those, because that's not within our gift. Yeah, yeah, but I wasn't, I was just trying to might be show a, a different avenue to that yeah, uh, yeah. as it no, starts, no, not, not, not yours. Absolutely. Um but but the the JSNI that, that's being conducted for the localities that sounds uh, very good. Uh Councillor Climel. Thank you, Chair. Just picking up on um, Councillor Jay, really, I think for, for residents, what it appears is if we, we go round in circles and we talk to public health, we talk to the ICB, we talk for, to all the different partners, but never get a solution, really, to the difficulties that Tamworth residents have in travelling to some of these places because of the deprivation that, that we know is high in Tamworth. So... I don't know, Chair, whether there is something that we can put forward as a recommendation or whether it's something you can take forward to um, the staff's health and wellbeing um, committee. But I do think we need to find out how we can get more connection with all these different authorities so that we understand what's happening and they understand what's happening here in Tamworth. Thank you. Chair, if I could, I mean, as, as officers, obviously, what we can do is, is try to offer you relevant contacts um, and to sort of, you know, what, what those relevant um, bodies might be um, for, you to, for you to sort of make those inquiries. So that's certainly something between ourselves and, and public health colleagues we could look to, to establish. But obviously, we're, you know, uh, it's, it's difficult because we don't commission health services. Um, we're concerned with the work of the district and, and public health have their own, own remit there. But we could certainly support that in terms of trying to um, get the relevant contact for the uh, ICB. And I know in the past you have had representatives of the CCG, um, you know, several years ago, actually come in to talk about that, those issues of, of healthcare provision. Thanks, Lydia. Sorry, me again. I'm challenging you here on things that probably aren't necessarily your, your remit, but... Um, 
we talk about you know there's, there's housing uh, surroundings transport communities etc right when or would it ever be in your remit to look at a town like town of the so populated densely populated and suggest things like you know for example that piece of land there shouldn't have six houses built on it just because it's a piece of land we should have a park there because it, it would serve that community or there's a new there's a large piece of land that can have a whole estate on it should that have something you know is there anywhere in there where your remit spreads out to there and you can recommend that actually there's so much you know you can be too populated and you need to do something else with the space so good question I can answer this one, she says. <laughs> um, yes, actually. Um, so remember I talked about the different functions of a public health team. So one of those is the public health consultancy. And when you are developing your local plan, we're a consultee to local plan, so we can give advice and guidance around our views. You don't have to take it. It's not mandatory. It's advisory. Um, and we've done that with very many of the districts already. I don't, to my knowledge, we've not had a recent conversation with Tamworth, but we'd be very happy to. So those are exactly the kinds of conversations. But similarly, if you've got an application for, I don't know, a large housing estate or something and you wanted to run it past colleagues in the public health team, we can facilitate that for you as well and give our advice around what that might look like and what health inequalities it might give. Of course, your tool of choice should be a health impact assessment for your planners, your planning policy team. Um, and that's something that we are working towards. And we haven't got something. We've got a couple of templates knocking around, but we haven't got a finished piece to give you yet. And that will potentially, if um, you, you think it's suitable, would accompany your community impact assessment process. And I think, you know, again, it's, it's a function of the, of the planning authority when granting planning permission to take account of all infrastructure issues. So that would include roads, health, education, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, that, that's where you come back to developers being asked to make contributions towards, at times, towards those various um, pieces of infrastructure. Um, again, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not a planning specialist, so I wouldn't be able to talk in detail about that process. And of course, if we're making decisions about uh, any develop, development we may be doing, then we have our community impact assessment process, which we would sort of go through, which again would, would account for as far as possible to the availability of, of um, health provision and other provision and infrastructure. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah I think all of these processes look at things, some of them look wide, more widely, of course, but lots of them look for their own reason, not at Tamworth as, as a whole. Um, it's a small town, geographically it's very small. There's, you know, there's got to be a point, it's my opinion, where you can't populate anymore within that geographical area. Um, so maybe that is a good idea to get public health view in the local planned sessions to start looking at that because there aren't that many spaces left. I think you've hit the nail on the head there. I think that is the local plan, the function of the local plan. I think if the planners were here, um, and that's very much around how you engage with your consultees, of which we would be um, active and quite willing participants in that, as we have in, in other areas. Um, the local plan, um, I've, I've never had... I, I, my background's housing, and I used to do a bit of housing strategy back in the day. Um, I don't think I ever fully appreciated, though, the breadth of a local plan and the opportunities that it brings for you. Some of the areas, for example, that we've been working with have been considering things like saturation policies as well. So some of the things that you're talking about, sort of that, that makes me think that's perhaps where you go in with some of those thoughts, and that might be something that you want to consider as a district moving forward. Um, but yeah, it's the art of the possible, really, through the local plan. The local plan process, I would suggest, has changed quite a bit um, as well. So we'd be very willing to have that conversation with you. It, we're quite early in the process for the local planning, aren't we? It's 2030, the, the new one that needs to be completed, is it? I would be not in time. Uh, Councillor Woodrup. Just a quick one, probably for us, but couldn't we look at somebody from the board attending one of these meetings or setting up a, a working party? It doesn't have to be every month, but, you know, twice yearly or something for an update to bring back and feedback going from what Councillor Jai was saying. I think it's important that if we're going to do our job effectively, that we need that support in the insight, you know, talking to the residents in Tamworth. Wh which board are you on about? Sorry. The RCB board, whatever it is you was talking about. The Health and Wellbeing, the health and wellbeing board. board. So, 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 
from my understanding that, that there's three sorts sorts of boards. You've got the ICB, ICP, sorry, four, uh, County Health, Health and Wellbeing, they're, they're over the Review and Scrutiny Committee, and then the Health and Wellbeing, Health Panel Board, Health Board at County, Health and Wellbeing Board. So I don't think that we can sit on the ICB. No, it's not sitting on there, it's getting somebody to come and talk to us or, or having questions that you can ask, maybe. Is that... I think it would depend on who those people that go to the, represent the districts on the health and wellbeing board. Who do they already speak to? Yeah. If that representation isn't correct, <coughs> is it right then to to come here? If they're already speaking, they might be speaking to the cabinet, they might be speaking to the officers, whatever. It might already be there. So I think it depends on that, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's something I can take back as well, because um, within the public health team, we um, assist to facilitate. We don't, I can't say we lead it. We lead the coordination of the function of the Health and Wellbeing Board. And the Health and Wellbeing Board isn't, um, it doesn't directly influence ICB commissioning, for example, but it's that Health and Wellbeing Board for Staffordshire. So there's, there's um, a conversation that we c I can take back on your behalf to inquire as to how the... Um, representatives communicate with you guys and cascade that information back to you back and forth it used well, to be into them, well that's that's what i mean it's into them but how they then feed give it back, back feed it back to you isn't it back in the day quite some years ago i'm i'm pretty sure that the health and well-being well-being board was much bigger the agendas were jam-packed nobody got really time to talk there were lots of representatives on there and i think they streamlined the representation mm -hmm. but probably what we've not clarified is the lines of communication and how that works so i will make sure that i take that back as an action and i'll feed it back to the joes the joes <laughs> the joes for you i'll get you an answer everybody should have a job just to streamline this a bit um because obviously the the whole point of this evening was about one here in the context but two to have a look at the the recommendations that had come down from County, um, but with the context that's, that's been spoken about uh, and what we've spoken about, um, I've sort of ticked a, a few things off and I'll, I'll, I'll just read them out and then it might encourage a little bit more discussion. So uh, the, recommend, the first recommendation was to see what's going on within the locality uh, in Tamworth and it's quite clear that work's being undertaken by the officers. Um, and there's, uh, as we've heard previously, there's strategies being commissioned through CIC, so we're still waiting for them to be be brought in. Uh, the local plans being formulated. Um, just with the um, community impact assessments, is there any uh, scope of re reviewing them at all? We are reviewing the District Council's um, Community Impact Assessment, so that, that work is underway. Um, and obviously we've, we've had that in place for some considerable time, so again we felt it was time for a refresh. I think one of the things that is going to be important in terms of that refresh is making sure that A, um, those Community Impact Assessments are being used comprehensively. So there should be a Community Impact Assessment accompanying every Cabinet report. Um, so every decision that the local authority makes um, should be supported by a community impact assessment, which would take account of uh, a number of issues, um, including um, health. Um, so, so that's the first thing is to make sure it's comprehensive. If it's not comprehensively being used, obviously what we need to do is understand why. Um, there may be a couple of reasons for that. One is that obviously um, it, it, if it's not streamlined and sufficiently user-friendly, then it may be something that, that discourages people to, from using that. And I think the other thing that we've sort of been talking about over the last couple of weeks really is, are we providing, do we have enough information for people to actually assess those impacts meaningfully? And I think, again, that's where there's a really great link with the work that's being done by public health and also by ourselves to actually provide people with um, easily digestible, available information about what the actual um, issues are for the various groups that one would want to assess 
identify that impact assessment. So that that um, review is un being undertaken, and certainly we see some strong links back into um, this piece of work around health in all policies, um, you know, to strengthen that. I think um, what we don't want to do is end up with something which is simply and purely a health impact assessment, because obviously there are many other issues that we need to take uh, account of. Um, and also, as I say before, you know, you can have the greatest impact assessment in the world, the most comprehensive, if people are discouraged from using it or, or from using it, if it's not user friendly, if it's not sufficiently um, uh, direct and, uh, and accessible, then it won't get used. And I think what well, you know, that's the essential thing really is that we do see every decision the council makes supported by a community impact assessment, which is meaningful. Um, so yes, review is underway. This work will certainly be picked up as part of that. And I'm sure that colleagues undertaking that work would be happy to kind of talk that through with, with the committee uh, at the relevant time. Uh, so to me, that's the recommendation number one that was on the county's report uh, looked at. Uh, I don't feel I need or we need to make any recommendation on that, that, that point. Uh, Number two sort of flows into that as well, uh, where it says uh, review what is being done to undertake health impact assessments. Uh, that's just been spoken about, uh, so it, it, it's, it's an ongoing process. Uh, and I personally feel confident that the officers are going to interact with, with county. Uh, so again, I don't feel there needs to be a recommendation for that. Number three, it says... Um, Identify a named district lead uh, to act as the conduit between the county and other districts and to be the health champion or advocate for this work. This is the one where I think we could make a recommendation. And that being that whoever's taking on the role of chair of this next year becomes a link person to health and wellbeing boards um, so not actually sitting on the board but but but, but being that conduit as it says and, and I, I think that um, well the, the, the mine officer that's taking this on is Joe <laughs> but I'm not making a recommendation for that that's my boss <laughs> thank you Chair I, one of the things that I have forgotten to mention um, pretty foolish actually because it's a big piece of work that's ongoing at the moment is this health inequalities group that's been established so this is being led by our assistant director Claire McIver um, Claire has been working with the district and borough chief executives to identify um, officer leads for the mm -hmm. health inequalities work of which that's why I was pointing at Joe and being silly really um, Joe has been assigned as your lead officer for Tamworth and then it, it would make sense if there's some dialogue I guess between you as a scrutiny function I'd suggest and Joe to pick up those issues and then they can be fed up as well to the <coughs> being board so that we've got that golden thread going on I always talk about the golden thread um, perhaps makes yeah I mean I, th I think it's just appropriate that the, the the chair whoever it is next year is, is the conduit because uh, from my experience the, this last six months or so uh, sitting on the uh, police war on crime panel sitting on the, um, the county committee uh, attending the county safety partnership meetings, um, while being invited to them, that the, the, the person who is sitting in this chair is going to have the broadest view of all the committees that are, that are, are, are piling into the, these issues that, that we're seeing in Tamworth. Um, so, does anybody want to second me on move that? the chair of the Health and Wellbeing Committee be the conduit between district and county and public health and health and wellbeing board. And uh, vote. Yep. Okay, uh, so, num uh, so that's recommend what we're it was recommendation three of the county paper. Uh, their recommendation number four was about uh, health profiles. Uh, as we alluded earlier, the JSNA is going to cover that one. Um, so I don't feel like there's anything needed to be done there. Number five was embed health in 
health impact assessments, uh, again, that, uh, that's been spoken about previously, uh, that it's, it's been undertaken by the officers. Uh, number six was uh, split into four different sections and it was think big. Uh, so if due for a refresh, refresh include a health and wellbeing policy framework within the local plan. Spoken already, that's in early, early parts and it'll probably come through next year through to our committee. Um, but before the end of this year, I'll send an email to the um, portfolio holder uh, who's responsible for that and to ask if uh, how the health and wellbeing uh, committee can be involved in that process. Uh, so I don't need to, uh, so that's just an action of uh, sending an email. Embed health and wellbeing li uh, within the licensing policy. Uh, do we we do already have? It's part of that, isn't it? The licensing policy, I believe, has just been reviewed, and and anything that's impacting on license always takes um, that 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 view. It's health. It's it's around the children. It's around safeguarding the community. So yes. Thank you. Yeah, I'm pleased this think big bit was kind of what I was getting at earlier, looking at the, the bigger picture. Um, our, as we're looking at these and adding amendments for our own recommendations, I, I'd perhaps add in here uh, within planning policy as a separate point. And I know there's probably going to, you know, the planning is regulatory and all that, but surely within our town, we, should, we could look at it from that angle as well. I know it might come under the local plan, maybe that's exactly where it fits, but... That is one thing that the health impact assessment is, it, it's uh, legislation that health impact assessment needs to be done for a local plan, isn't it? Uh, C was conduct HIAs on major strategies, uh, just alluded to the local plan, so I don't need to do anything with that one. Uh, on a district level, do you think we've got enough resources to deal with this? Um, I mean, there's never enough resources to do everything that we want to do. Um, obviously, what, what we do have in Tamworth, I mean, if we look at it from an asset base, you know, what we have got is a, a fantastic third sector offer that goes a long way to enabling us to do some of the uh, some of the additionality that we've seen, particularly through COVID. Um, I think what we do have to do is focus on our core business and focus on those things that, that are um, in effect, you know, we've got to do our job first. So again, many of those aspects that are, of work that are our core business, housing, um, planning, uh, environmental health, et cetera, have that huge and direct impact on uh, those social uh, determinants of health. So I think um, you know we are we are resourced to deliver our corporate plan, and we're resourced to you know do the work that we've committed to do. I think what we what we can't offer, obviously, and I think it's been alluded to a little bit down here, is we haven't got lots of boots <coughs> on the ground to put into um, to to provide a, a wider kind of direct intervention on some health issues um, and. To a certain extent, you know, perhaps nor should we, because that's not our bit, our core business. Um, but I think we're, you know, certainly, I, I suppose, the, the, just to repeat the statement, you know, we have the resources we need to deliver our corporate plan uh, and to deliver the the um, projects and programmes that we've undertaken to deliver. And just really to add and support that, really, the whole purpose of the health in all agenda isn't around, you know trying to create additional resources it's just around trying to open people's minds to the part that they can play in improving health and well-being in their area or in their role so it's it's making the planning officer aware of the health in all agenda it's making your leisure services and your housing officers and your homelessness teams and your vulnerability teams and those that are dealing with safeguarding and joe and i were laughing really because um well not we weren't laughing but um we were talking about um the work that we've done around safeguarding because there's a similar message there safeguarding is everybody's business when we first started talking about the safeguarding agenda we used to think that it was adult social care or children's social care and it's very much around us as a district i say us because 
districts is my background. Forgive me, I revert to type quite easily. But um, district, you, you're the eyes, ears and feet on the floor. You, you, you're the ones that know your, your area most. So when we say safeguarding is everybody's business, it's a very similar ask around the health agenda. It's around being very mindful of the policies that you're making and the services that you're delivering and how that could impact adversely against a community or an individual. Um, so you, I, I, would, I would advocate really strongly for pushing the health and all agenda out to your whole organisation, to your workforce and your members as being not something additional on top of what they're doing, but how they open their minds to it as part of their everyday work, really. It's not about creating that additional burden and workload. And the message we're hoping that, you know, is able to be taken away from today is that health is everyone's business. And we mean it, mean it in its broadest sense, health and wellbeing, rather than, <coughs> you know, the blue light services that we perhaps can't control today. If that makes sense. Mm. I suppose just picking up on something that you just said there as well, um, it, it's not always about improving health. It's sometimes about or is the stuff that we're doing not negatively impacting on health? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Prevention, really. Uh, so, in areas where it says, uh, Mapping community assets or identify lo locations for community health points. I think that's been undertaken by through the, the strategies that are going to be coming through. No, we don't need to do anything there. And you said earlier that obviously all this work's ongoing. Um, and I think you said about six to eight months or mid end of summer for the profiles. Yeah. And, and then once they're collated and it comes down to borough or district level, uh, how long would officers think that they'd need to have a look on that to, to see what, what's going on or if there's any improvements to make? I think it's probably important to say there's, so there's eight of these being produced. So um, I, ca I can't give you an indicative, I can only give you an indicative timetable. I can't give you, you know, a, a definitive date as to when you'll have sight of that. But we're saying sort of end of the summer, early autumn, there's going to be eight produced and I don't know where the time with this you know top middle or bottom of the do list for the insight team um, but I think it stands to reason that they will have to go through a ratification process through the district with officers and a consultation process as well um, we've done something similar around community safety assessments back in the day where there's some dialogue then between officers um, at the county that have produced them and then consultees such as district officers that will be the ones that you know will use them um, so again I, I'm not entirely sure how that's been factored in either um, I would say I would hope certainly by the new year the new as in January that you'd have something that you can start you know using properly um, the the positive is the better health Staffordshire locality profiles that have been done around weight management and healthy healthy lifestyles they are available on the county's website now they've been done and they're ready for you to use so you could start looking at um, how you might want to incorporate those into some of your strategies and your policies moving forward already um, yeah sorry I haven't got a more definitive answer there uh, uh, also a little bit more on that um, not so much on the profiles but um, I, th I think you said you were working on the documents for guidance on the health impact assessments. I, I, personally, I, I, I'd like to see it as a well-being impact assessment. So, so for officers as well, it, 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 they understand that it's, it, it's not health as such. Um, so how, what's the, t the rough time scale on them? So I'll take that point back because um, there has been some dialogue around what we call it because we know that the mm. word health turns people off and we don't want it to turn people off. We want to take people on a journey with us. Um, the timescales are, well, we'd hope to have them done spring as in now, but we have had some complications with the resources back in public health, um, which has been beyond our control. Um, I think the timescales we were looking for for the health impact assessments were over the summer. I think we were, we were talking August, September time. The reason we've pushed that back is because we want to have some real meaningful conversations with our district colleagues. We don't want to do it to folk. We want them to be part of that co-production process. 
Um, I suspect it's going to look different in, in each of the different districts as well. Mm -hmm. As much as we'd like to have one template that we roll out everywhere, that everybody works to and everybody understands in a similar sort of vein, I suspect that we're all going to have um, the confines, I suppose, of our current structures, such as the community impact assessments, or the places have got still equality impact assessments. So we're going to have to contend with some of that moving forward. But I, I also suspect, because the health inequalities group is currently in its infancy, it hasn't met yet. No, that's, um, that's no, it right, isn't it? Yet. Next, so next I, week. I think we will be taking some recommendations through to that group where all the districts will be represented as well. So we'll do some stuff behind the scenes and then we will go back to that group. Um, so I think it's likely to be summer before we've got anything tangible that we're able to sort of have signed off across Staffordshire. You'll have some drafts that you can work to. There's some stuff that you'll be able to have a go at, but... Um, I think it'd be foolish for us to expect that to be ready any time sooner, if I'm honest. Can I, I just add there, sorry, Chair. I mean, that's where I hope that once working with Sarah and the team back at County and that group, I'm more than happy to have that conversation with yourself and the and portfolio holder mm -hmm. as to where we are, you know, and, 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 and how we link it in. And then we can probably give you a better time scale on everything moving forward then. Because, you, you know, there's no doubt we do it through what we do already in partnership it's just now about making sure that that process is, is embedded i guess um, so i'm more than happy to have that meeting with you councillor and, and, and the portfolio holder you know on this agenda a bit further down the line and we can then put maybe something into the program if you feel fit to do so with this work going on at the minute do you feel that it should be a specific person in cabinets in their portfolio as opposed to just communities do, do you think that could could could, could help officers yeah i think that's probably a matter for members i mean certainly from the point of view of um you know the way that we as, as officers i guess look at this work it is based around communities so you know it is about how a community is that's our concern for our communities is around you know health economy um, you know the whole range of, of, of those things so um, I, I certainly don't think that from a you know if we were designing a job we probably wouldn't have a job that had health in the job title um, but I think in terms of the makeup of cabinet that that probably wouldn't be something I could necessarily comment on I, I didn't mean a specific role I, I meant it, it actually being in somebody's in try so, so it doesn't get lost through I mean, I, again, I wouldn't want to comment on that. I mean, I think your proposal around the, the chair of, of this committee having that role as, as a direct conduit um, is, is, is something which I think would be very, very helpful. Um, and certainly in terms of that communication back into some of the county-wide boards, um, I think that would, that would be um, a, a, you know, something which would be very, very beneficial um, going forward. Thank you. So, so number seven, it just speaks about making uh, a plan. Um, obviously, we've, we've heard this evening that all this work is on, ongoing. Uh, made that one recommendation uh, there. How would officers feel about eight months or maybe December? Yeah, I think that's realistic. I mean, even if we don't have the final articles, I, I, I can't, I can't describe the twists and turns that may come with this piece of work because, as I say, the in intricacies and the detail that we're going to have to get into that will satisfy na effectively nine partners um, could be quite difficult. And I'm hoping we don't get too many headaches and hiccups along the way. But certainly by December, we'd be, I, I would suspect, in a good place to give you some sort of update. If not, I can't, I can't promise the final product because I. I can't say things may change. I would suggest probably in three months' time we've, we're going to be able to give you some sort of update. Um, so, I mean, I don't know how often your scrutiny meetings meet, but it might be advantageous to have sight of regular updates and we'll just feed back where we're up to. Would the committee be okay with a three month written? Who knows? Yeah, uh, three month written update and then back in December. 
I suppose, I suppose just to clarify, you're probably not going to get a massive report in three months' time, but you may get, you know, a couple of paragraphs or something to highlight the work that we've been doing, just succinctly, just to give you some oversight. Would that be okay? S sorry, I meant more of like an email to, to the chair, to the chair, whoever's in there, and then they can pass it on to, to or they, they can pass it on to Camille. Yeah, I just got a question. Um, <clears throat> so just clear some um, wording up. Uh, and it was probably in the presentation, so apologies if I missed it. Um, so you've got health in all policies. Um, I've also heard you say health in all agendas. Is that the same thing? What is the absolute specific, specific of that? What's the practical actions? Um, and... How does that link into HIA, Health Impact Assessment? Is that linked in, in any way? Okay, so really simply, health and all policies, I have to make it really simple because otherwise I don't understand it. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> health and all policies to me is a principle. It's about opening everybody's minds to the effects that a service policy procedure scheme may have on someone's health, whether it be positively or negatively. A health impact assessment is a tool to use to have some oversight as to the effects that the policy process program service may have on that personal community. Does that make sense? So the health in all policies agenda is, is just that. So HIAP is the sort of the abbreviation that gets banded around lots, but it's it's a principle slash agenda slash movement, if you like. Um, to, to introduce a way of thinking and a way of working that is then applied to everything that we do in, in local government and public sector, I suppose. Um, and as I say, health in all policy, health in, health impact assessment is a tool within a toolkit that we are looking to develop for that. So what we're hoping is that we'll have a suite of information that makes it a little bit more palatable um, when, we're, when we're trying to roll it out and explain it. So we're hoping that we'll have like a little introductory video. There'll be some e-learning training packages that we can share with folk and that these will be made available to elected members such as yourselves, but also um, our workforce as well. So that whether it be, you know, a senior leader, a manager or an operational officer, everybody's got some kind of understanding around how that applies in their area of business. Does that make sense? Yeah. So health in all policies, health in all policies yeah. and health in all agendas. So it's one and the same thing. It's same just the thing. way that I've said it. Okay, yeah. so, that's cool. so think of it as health in all policies and it's an agenda. I've I've obviously slipped up while I've been talking there, so apologies. Thank you. Okay, no worries. Is that okay? Yeah, so I'd just like to thank you for your time and, and it's encouraging to see that all this work's going on in the background and it's it's, it's really good to see the context and that, uh, that little mini mini presentation. Uh and uh, yeah, we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you. Cheers, thanks. Thank you. Okay, so uh, agenda item number five is the draft annual report of the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee. Uh, this is an annual report <coughs> in draft of the committee, which we normally receive at this time. It will be updated following this meeting to capture the business of this meeting and to complete the attendance details. Uh, the plan is when that this report together with any scrutiny committee annual reports will be presented to a council, full council meeting in the next municipal year, uh, as everybody had a chance to have a look at the draft report. Uh, any comments? Uh, does ever really just a show of hands for endorsement of the um, report? Uh, agenda item number six: uh, response to reports of the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee. Uh, so, no recommendations have been made to cabinet as yet. Uh, like, like said, um, I'll be going on the twenties. Sometime next week, uh, I think it's th Thursday next week usually, isn't it? Um, 
But again, that'll be uh, relayed back to yourselves or, or whoever the, the, the committee makeup will be for, for next year. Uh, in right number seven, consideration of matters referred to the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee from Cabinet or Council. Uh, there are none. Um, General item number eight, update on health related matters considered by Staffordshire County Council uh, and I'd like to hand over to Councillor Jay, but I don't think there has been a meeting since, has there? No, there hasn't been a meeting since the last update. Uh, any questions on that or anything that needs to be, feel needs to be relayed to County? Uh, so, agenda item number nine is uh, the forward plan. <clears throat> As with most of the, 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 the coming up to the end of the year, I don't really want to add things on that the, the next chair uh, might want to take off. But I feel that that what we've had tonight is a good look forward to. So we've got all the strategies coming through. Uh, so no doubt they'll be going on to on to the. Uh, Oh, sorry. I'll skip forward there. That's forward plan, isn't it? Maybe just about the forward plan, but there isn't anything particularly new that we're relevant. No. Nope. Um, but yeah, back to where I was. Um, yeah, so so, so that the, the, that'll be going on to the works agenda for next year. Um, has anybody got anything else to add? Can I suggest? Just that you've done a good job since you joined the, the chair. Well done. Thank you, Councillor Jai. Um, I'd just like to say thanks uh, to everybody that's uh, been here for the meetings. Uh, I think they've been really well well given uh, from the committee and the officers. Uh, got some really good work done uh, this year. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to Councillor Kymore for the start of the year uh, and, and the work that she put in. Um, have a good end of the year, everybody. Uh, and a lot to close the meeting at 19.19. Thank you.